everyone, it's Tiffany, and I'm back in the Comic Pop Kitchen, where I'm going to be bringing you our very first savory dish. A lot of people have been talking about this one, especially DC fans. That's right, we're going to be making Green Arrow's Spicy Chili. This is another recipe ripped right from the comics. This time, Green Arrow's Secret Files and Origins number one from 2002. So in it, we see a comic book page where Ollie is actually serving chili to a bunch of the Justice Leaguers, and they proclaim it's too spicy. So I'm looking forward to seeing just how hot this chili is. Is. There's a lot of ingredients that go into this. It's a bunch of prep and then pretty much you just put it all together But you'll see how all that goes special note though There's some inconsistencies between the ingredient list and the directions for example The ingredient list calls for a pound and a half of sirloin cut to chunks Whereas the directions ask for ground beef I think as long as you stick with sirloin you can go with either and it's whatever your preference is for chili Because both of them will make a great chili. So I'm gonna go give this a shot for this recipe, Ollie recommends a large saucepan. I ended up going with an eight and a half quart pot. I just wanted a little extra room to be able to mix stuff. You're gonna want a spoon to stir all your chili up. You're also gonna want at least one knife. I ended up actually using both of these. For cutting boards, I was gonna use two because I'm doing meat and veggies. I like glass for my meat and I like to use wood or plastic for my veggies. And a can opener, cause you have some cans you're gonna wanna open. All right, onto the ingredients. I ended up going with the sirloin that I cut into chunks. I took a pound and a half, I cut into about one inch chunks. Again, that's from the ingredient list. In the actual directions, it mentions the ground beef, which you can also get ground sirloin for, so feel free to use that if you'd like to instead. I just happen to like the meat chunks better. You're gonna need one can of whole tomatoes, as close as you can get to 16 ounce. I can only find 14 and a half. Don't get rid of that juice and just cut these up. You're gonna need one cup of minced onion. I ended up using a yellow onion for this. You're also gonna need a half a cup of green peppers chopped. This is optional according to Ollie, but I really like the flavor it adds, so it's going in. Two teaspoons of garlic minced, and now for the spices. One and a half teaspoons of salt and one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. You're gonna need two teaspoons of cumin, two teaspoons of paprika. There's lots of types out there. I went with smoke because I feel like Ollie would totally back me on this one. One teaspoon of cayenne pepper. It says I like it hot in the recipe, so I think this is kind of to taste in a sense. You're gonna need one tablespoon of chili powder. He requests Gebhardt, but if you can't find that, just any chili powder. One tablespoon of hot New Mexico chili powder and one tablespoon of California chili powder. A half teaspoon of dried basil, crushed. You're gonna need a half a cup of water. And if this wasn't hot enough, Tabasco to taste. You're gonna need an eight ounce can of tomato sauce, two 16 ounce cans of red kidney beans, dark or light, and one teaspoon of brown sugar. For garnish, Ollie recommends some grated cheese, some crackers, he says saltine or oyster, I had wheat, so we're going with that, or some chopped onions. All right, I'm sure you've seen this before, but let's talk about getting that garlic out of that skin. There's a garlic clove. We're gonna take the flat of our knife and we're gonna put it right up against the garlic and then smash it with our hand. See, look at that. We can just peel this right off, pops right out, and now we can mince our garlic. It's as simple as that. It's gonna be minced anyway. It doesn't matter if it's a little crushed. I'd like give it one more crush, and now I'm just gonna start running my knife through this. Watch your fingers, and kids, make sure you get your parents' help with this one. Just run your knife through a whole bunch of times. Doesn't matter which way you go, until it looks pretty much like that. Okay, let's start cooking our chili. I've got my burner on probably medium, low, medium, and I'm gonna throw some oil in here. Since I'm not using the ground meat, I wanna make sure that there's a little extra fat in here because my sirloin's kind of lean. All right, once it's up to temperature, I'm gonna take my meat cubes and I'm gonna put them right into that pot. Just spoon them all in there. Try not to overcrowd the pan too much. It's kind of why the larger will be better, just so that you don't steam the meat, you kind of brown it more. And it's gonna stick a little bit, but that's okay. You're gonna get a little bit of browning on the bottom, just don't let it burn. You're also gonna put in all of your spices. That's right, all of them are going in there. That includes your salt and pepper as well. And also that basil, don't forget that. When it comes to the chilies, if you can't find the exact chilies he's looking for, there's plenty of charts out there that give you the various Scoville ratings, which is of course how you rate chilies. So you can also find out flavor profiles there as well and just find ones that match. Because we're on the East Coast, I had a harder time finding West Coast chilies. So it depends on your location too. You know, once this gets in there, things are gonna start getting stuck. At any point in time, you can always add a little bit more oil, but don't worry, in the end, we're not cooking this at a super high heat, so as long as we keep it from burning, we'll be just fine. Also, you'll be cooking chili, so just be careful, you might wanna have a vent on because it'll get in the air pretty easily. 
So once your meat kind of looks like this, it'll be brown. And now we can add in our cup of minced onions, which is actually gonna add in a little moisture to the party, which will start to kind of deglaze the bottom of this pot. If you decided to put green peppers in, now's the time to add them. Just put them right in there with your onions. So just give these a good mix, really just get them incorporated with the spices and the meat that you've got going on. Here I'm doing a little heat management. I don't want anything to burn. Again, we've got a lot of spices going on here and there's nothing worse than burnt spices. Don't forget those onions have a lot of water in them and that along with the salt is really gonna pull a lot of that out. I also know I'm forgetting something right around here. That's right, the garlic. Time to put that in as well. So that could go in with the peppers and the onions, but I forgot to put it in until just now, so I put it in now. It's no harm, no foul here. Just incorporate that as well, and we're just gonna make sure that we don't have any sticking. And then once these have softened, we're gonna end up adding in our tomatoes. Don't forget, this is the undrained can of tomatoes that we cut up. You want all of those juices. I couldn't fit it in my bowl, so I left some of them in the can, so I'm gonna pour those in now. And then I'm also gonna grab that can of eight ounces of tomato sauce. Gonna pour that right in there. That's all the tomatoes we have going on here. There's no tomato paste. This isn't a super heavy tomato flavored chili. Also time for the water. Now we're gonna get all the spices, all the browning from that meat. It's all gonna come right up off the bottom of the pot and make an amazing flavor. So just make sure you really stir this up. You wanna get everything off the bottom. That's why we don't want anything to burn too because then you'd be getting all that burnt stuff in there and that wouldn't be very delicious at all. At this point, you might be wondering what it is I'm cooking on right now. This is actually a small propane camping stove that I'm using here because it's a lot easier for me to film this than my actual stove. So I am going to inevitably move this off of here, but for now we're just gonna bring this to a boil and then we'll bring it to a simmer. And we'll let that go for the next three to four hours on low heat, low and slow, ladies and gentlemen. Many hours later, and here we are. 10 minutes before you're gonna serve this, now is the time to put those beans in. If you put them in any earlier, you're gonna have complete mush by the time you go to serve this. Also, these cans are supposed to be partially drained, so I'm not really sure what Ollie meant by that, so I put in essentially one can with the liquid, one without, essentially partially drained. Don't forget that brown sugar, the one teaspoon is gonna go in there right at the end. At this point, those meat cubes I have have broken down. They're super tender. They're kind of breaking apart right into the chili. It looks great. It smells amazing. And I can't wait for the next 10 minutes to go by so I can try this. Maybe I can find a few other members of the league to help me try this one out. All right, guys, so several hours have gone by. The last 10 minutes before we served, we added in our beans and our brown sugar. And now I've plated it up and I have these three gentlemen here who are gonna try out Ollie Queen's famous chili. Yes. All right. This is the Green Arrow chili recipe um, in the comic book page that has it. Uh, all the superheroes are proclaiming it to be too hot, except for Batman. Um, he he, he would never complain. Or... They say it's too spicy. Oh, yeah, they say uh, it's Batman too spicy. says it could use some crackers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and you can well, yeah, see we and have this an is, array of crackers. These are each of Ali's uh, recommendations. We've got cheese, raw onions, oyster crackers, saltines, and he wanted us to put Tabasco in the chili to taste, but since I figured you guys would be eating it, it would be to your tastes. Okay. That's All right? Idea. Yeah. So, here we go. But it is apparently supposed to be spicy. That's the warning. Mm -hmm. right. Supposedly it is. We'll see what, what you guys... even without the Tabasco? Is that... Yeah, even without the Tabasco. Okay. So, um, you know, as you guys know by now, we've already made a few decisions based on the fact that the ingredient list and the directions have some inconsistencies, oh. but this is... Pretty much, this is accurate. This is comic book accurate. from from a comic book recipe. That's hey, Amy's we case. Spot on. So it's true. Go for it, guys. Okay, dig in. Go. Just All right. Use my hands here. Yeah, yeah. Just dig in. We're all friends here. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that cheese. I feel mm. like that's not fair to the chili. That's that sirloin was excellent. It fell right apart in my mouth. Oh. Mmm. A little bit of heat back there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It hits you after a couple seconds. Yeah. There it is. But that's good. Mm -hmm. The meat itself, because we did three to four hours low and slow, mm. fell completely apart. Yeah. Now, if you're gonna go with the ground beef version of this, you may not need to do it as long, but don't forget that that ground sirloin can dry out, so just be careful with that. Mm. Mm. Um, and it's very important, again, to add those beans at the end, because otherwise they will just be mush by the time that you, you serve this out. I was gonna say they're soft, but they're still tender. Yep, that's, good, a, that's good. a 10 minute. That's Ollie Queen's recommendation there. Mm. And even though he was kind of loose with some of his instructions, I think overall this came out really good. Yeah. This is just a really good bowl of chili. Yes, it is. I don't think it's mind-blowing. I don't think it's going to destroy 
your taste buds. Mm -hmm. um, but you could alter it that. I mean, there's so many other chili peppers out there that you could, you know, if it doesn't come in a powder, you could dry it yourself and you can grind it in a, in a coffee grinder or a spice grinder if you wanted to increase the heat in this. But I think overall, this just is a nice spice. I think to somebody who isn't used to spicy foods, this could be pretty hot. Mm -hmm. Mine doesn't have any of the Tabasco in it yet. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's warm. It's got like a good heat to it, but I can still taste it. I think that's really important. I like his addition of the Tabasco because it adds a pop of spice mm -hmm. to the slow burning spice that's in there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Overall, like, I think this is just a great chili recipe. It was very good. Right? Yeah. It's a great thing to have in your arsenal. Oh, in your quiver, mm -hmm. if you will. Thanks, guys. It's chili is a thing that's like, for some reason, it's like really hard, hard to get, get right. I've never made it, so. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've had many, many different kinds of chili, and they run the gamut from like horrible to very good, and this is very good. Thank you. What's great about this, it's not too tomatoey. It's got a really great earthy spice to it. Mm hmm. That's yeah. probably the ground spices that were. It's all the it. different, like, there are, there's seriously like five, six different spices that go in here. He really limits himself on the tomatoes that go in here. There's no tomato paste in here. Mm. It's a much more, <laughs> like, like you said, like earthy or like mm. very meat centric and chili flavored centric. That's my kind of chili. I yeah. like all the meat. Yeah, too. good meat yeah. chili. Yeah. Um, so there you go, guys. Would you recommend that our audience tries this out? Yeah, oh, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And again, this is one of those things you can do to taste. You know what I mean? Like if you're someone who doesn't like too much spice, that's okay. There's plenty of chilies out there that provide a lot of flavor over heat. And if you're someone who likes something really hot, there's also plenty of chilies out there that will just blow your taste buds <laughs> off. So yeah. you can alter this as you like, but overall just the chili recipe itself, it's a great place to start. Yeah. So I'd say you guys definitely should check this out and you should definitely come on back and hang out with us here in the Comic Pop Kitchens on what for this episode, I think we're going to deem snack issues. If nothing else, because <laughs> Look at this cast, and we're in the original yeah, back issue set. True. That's true, yeah. right here. Yeah, this is it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. You got any more of this? No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do?